morning. Thank you very much for your kind attention. So I'll have the chance to start with my presentation on spectrochrome colored light for health. And most of you know the spectrochrome therapy, but um, I think um, I would like to know who has experienced the spectrochrome colors already. Could you please give me a sign? Uh -huh. So some of you may learn a little bit more about it. Otherwise, um, okay, let's start. Dinsha Gadiali, he was the inventor of this um, therapeutic color therapy system. Um, he is, um, had been born in India and half of his life he lived in the United States. He invented this um, system or applied the system the first time in 1897. So, uh, in my opinion, this is the, the eldest uh, systematically um, performed uh, color therapy system as far as I know. And uh, spectrochrome not only is um, treating the eyes as we know it from syntonics, we are treating the eyes and the skin Therefore, we call it systemic chromotherapy. Systemic means that we are treating mainly large areas of our body directly um, shown, the colors directly shown onto the bare skin. Chromotherapy is the medical description for the treatment with colored light. Phototherapy is a more wider uh, expression for this concept. And if you Google chromotherapy or phototherapy, you will find some information on the web. Um, one quite important uh, issue for Dinsha was standardizing the colors he was using because it's um, useless if you have two, three thousand different shades of red and uh, therapists would like to exchange their experience, it's uh, quite essential that you are talking about the same colors. And we will probably have the chance to um, have a look into this uh, light box I brought with me. Um, this is not a Dinsha light box and I will explain later where the differences are. But we need a kind of uh, help in in uh, order to use this clear and, and bright colors uh, as our, since our data projector is unable to produce more than grayish use of, of the colors we would like to show uh, or to see. Um, what we can say that uh, Dinsha's spectrochrome method is a kind of blend or synthesis from Newton's color system, uh, you know all the Newton, rainbow colors, seven, seven rainbow colors in the Newton system, and Goethe's uh, color system, which was mainly based on the perception of color. So the interaction between the eye and the brain resulting in this um, color perception, where uh, we have to look upon certain uh, aspects later. He, Dinsha was not the first uh, performing color therapy or chromotherapy in the late 19th century, mainly in the 20th century. Um, he had uh, important predecessors. We already heard from Brian in the presentation before. For example, General Pleasanton, Seth Pencoast, and Edwin Dwight Babbitt. But these predecessors uh, were using sunlight, filtered sunlight, because they mainly worked before the invention of the um, electrical incandescent light bulb. And Dinsha was the first chromotherapist using electrical light, also an issue of standardization, because the spectrum of an incandescent light bulb is more or less the same if you keep the um, parameters stable, but sunlight always changes hue and saturation and intensity. 
So in order to perform a reproducible chromotherapy, it's crucial, it's essential to have standardized light sources and standardized filters. The spectrochrome color properties. This, the spectrochrome colors are produced by using an incandescent lamp and specific filters according to the definitions of the Dinsha Health Society. And um, here I have to mention that Dinsha, Darius Dinsha, he's the uh, president of the Dinsha Health Society nowadays, is uh, experimenting with LED um, in order to produce uh, white light which can be filtered. But um, here I think uh, in other aspects uh, the Dinsha Health Society um, is quite rigid in, in terms of uh, integrating new ideas. Um, and here I think the Dinsha Health Society at the moment is too soft and too innovative um, in the way of integrating a light source, probably integrating a light source in an existing system which is not capable of uh, producing the same light quality than we would expect from an incandescent light. And all the um, colors produced by incandescent light not only have this U, we can, this, this specific color we can perceive with our eyes, we also and always have, oh by the way, can we switch off the, the fluorescent <coughs> lights? Not all the lights, this fluorescence only. Well, can you switch that red light off in the sun? Hmm, pardon? Uh -huh. um, these ones are okay. So switch, there was... The what? The red light in the corner. It's part of the presentation, but if you are disturbed by it, I can switch it off. <coughs> so the mm, all incandescent light sources have um, quite strong uh, mm, content of near infrared radiation, and so therefore all the experience over the last 110 years had been made with um, color plus near-infrared because it's mostly impossible to filter these near-infrared portions out of the light and the LEDs, um, the white light LEDs do not have this um, content of near-infrared and when we are talking about the biophoton theory um, of Fritz Popp. He is talking um, about a controlling level of radiation in the short um, wavelength range and a thermal um, radiation basis which always comes along with the other kind of radiation. So maybe, and we do not know exactly today, but maybe it's the combination of specific visible color and near-infrared radiation which makes the color or chromotherapy work as we expect it uh, to work in our system. The spectrochrome colors are highly saturated and this is uh, important not only to achieve a maximum efficiency, it's also um, important to achieve a reproducibility of the color effect and we will talk about this in a few minutes uh, much more in detail. The spectrochrome colors are not like that. They are no monochromatic colors. They um, cover a certain spectral range in the visible spectrum so they are polychromatic and um, when we are mm, thinking about the reason why colors um, have an effect on the cellular level, for example, 
then we um, have to look, look upon uh, absorption of specific um, wavelengths in pigments. And we have a lot of pigments in our system which carry a kind of quartz uh, resonator um, as you would know it from your quartz watch. So there's a, a time basis, um, a high frequency time basis which is attuned to a very specific frequency like you would know it from a tuning fork. And the tuning forks in most of the pigments in our body or the most important pigments carry tuning forks in, uh, in the form of metal ions. And for example, the, the iron, um, ele the element iron um, has, I think, in the range of green, for example, 40, 60 absorption lines. So what would happen if you are using a monochromatic light source? You only would address one of these absorption lines, but not the whole bunch of them. So in my understanding, there is a kind of uh, intrinsic intelligence in each single cell, which is able to make a selection Mm, which kind of wavelength will be absorbed and which will be repelled. And if we uh, step over this uh, cell, cellular intelligence by using monochromatic light, for the moment we do not know enough about these pro um, processes inside the cells to be sure that we are doing the right thing. And this is, for example, the reason why Karl, with his monochromatic dome, um, allows you to make your own individual color selection. So you are not forced to use a certain color, you are free in your choice. And this is a quite important issue. Dinsha says use this color in this uh, disorder, case of disorder and in doubt use green. And there is a question from Jacob. We see this in medicine. Medicine use, looks for what they call the active ingredient, which is like looking for the monochromatic source. Whenever you just treat with the active ingredient, you create side effects. Exactly. Right. Thank you. Saturated colors have opposite characteristics compared to the non-saturated ones. So as long as we are talking about blue, we do not exactly know what we are talking about because we have dark blue, we have light blue, we have the blue of the sky, we have indigo blue of some, some tint pigments. So there is a difference in the activity and in the physiological effects. For example, blue sky or fluorescent light is activating, especially when, when it has a, a certain intensity. <laughs> and dark blue colors are calming. So always we have always uh, take into account the intensity, the saturation, if we want to know about the physiological effect. Another example, saturated red is, stimul is a stimulant, but light red or pink color on prison walls have calming effects on the inhabitants. And in terms of uh, reproducibility, we are only talking about saturated colors in combination with the spectrochrome method. This is the birth of spectrochrome. This young lady launched Dinsha into the research of spectrochrome metry. It happened in 1897 where when Dinsha was still practicing in India, this lady suffered from a severe life-threatening enteric infection. She um, had to go to the, um, to the bathroom, I think, about 100 times a day. She lost a lot of liquid, body liquids, water, and she couldn't keep water in her system in this condition. 
and uh, Dinsha tried to treat her with um, some um, medical preparations without any effort. And then he uh, reminded himself that he had read something about color or chromotherapy in Babbitt's book. And he used a kerosene lamp combined with an indigo tinted glass filter to tonate the body directly onto the bare skin. And he also tonated milk and gave it this patient to drink. And after two days, um, she had recovered uh, in a degree that Dinsha couldn't believe his eyes, more or less. And this uh, brought him, led him into research how simple colors can act uh, in such an uh, astonishing, astounding way. And today the um, spectrochrome system not only works with tonating the skin, you also can tonate or radiate the, or shine the light on water and drink this water. This is especially um, important if you have to administer the color uh, at a certain um, specific, specifically defined daytime. And you cannot tonate yourself uh, in the office, but you can drink the uh, color charged water at this specific time. Lisbeth, you have a question? It certainly has an effect, but not a specific effect uh, in terms of chromotherapy. But uh, what uh, a clever guy found out that this polyethylene or uh, plastic bottles, if you put water into these plastic bottles and put the water into the sun, you have a disinfecting uh, effect on the water which would be a great idea for the third world. <clears throat> it would not work with glass bottles, by the way, but the plastic is transparent for ultraviolet radiation and the ultraviolet rays, as we talked about uh, yesterday, Downs and Blunt were experimenting with uh, killing bacteria using ultraviolet light, and this is the way to do it nowadays. There is a question. Yeah, um, if the plastic is not a clean one, uh, there are emanations. But you have to decide if you would like to die from cancer after 10 years of drinking water from a bottle or of a colitis uh, or enteritis of, uh, in, in case of drinking dirty water, um, which is um, filled with, with bacteria. So. Uh, I do not recommend drinking water from uh, plastic bottles. I just mentioned that there was, it was an article in a magazine in Germany where a clever guy found a way to help people in the third world um, to kill the bacteria. So we have different steps and uh, you are completely right not to drink water if possible from plastic containers. Um, if you still would like to have this bacteria killing effect, you could still use um, glass uh, containers made from rock crystal. Then you have the, I think, best solution for this problem. And to <clears throat> ask you about the particular times to drink water from particular frequency uh, frequencies. What was the timing based on? Was it based on the on the ancient? system of the organs and different times during the, during the, uh, the 24 hours? Do you remember what the timing was about? Uh, Dinsha, the Dinsha Health Society sends out uh, a significant letter each year for all the members where 
all the tonation, the best tonation um, times are calculated in advance. Um, so this is a two um, sheet long, two pages long list with a lot of numbers on it. Each number refers to a certain time and to a certain day where you should start the tonation. Okay. <coughs> It has to do with the moon phase, it has to do with the sunrise, and so on. Um, I have probably here in my bag some books where you can learn about more on that topic. This is the spectrochromometry encyclopedia and the Let There Be Light um, handbook practical manual for spectrochrome therapy. And as I already said, um, if you become a member of the Dinsha Health Society, I think it's just $3 a year, then you will receive the uh, newsletters and also this um, predicted uh, tonation time sheets every year. Dinsha started uh, after 23 years of research. He, the first um, tonation had been performed in 1897 and in 1920 he started to travel around the world, mainly in the United States but also in the rest of the world, teaching spectrochrome and one of his um, students was a senior surgeon at the Women's Hospital in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, Dr. Kate Baldwin, and she was thrilled and fascinated by the options you get when you use the spectrochrome system. She used up to 11 rooms for tonation in this hospital until um, she had been stopped by the administration after a while and um, as long as she was living she um, was uh, one of the strongest and most important witnesses um, of the effects of the spectrochrome system because as you might know or as you would expect the um, Food and Drug Administration started quite early in the 20s to make it quite hard for Dinsha to go on with his work. But we do not want to go into these more negative uh, aspects uh, of administrative stuff. These, the following um, slides are um, a little bit challenging for those who are not used to see um, burns, skin burns. And this is the case of Grace Sherlow. We can skip this more or less, but what oh, probably some m more information in detail. 80% uh, of her body had been burned at a degree of uh, at the third, third and fourth degree. Third degree is already quite severe or very severe and more than 15% of the body surface can be uh, life-threatening even today. The problem, what is the problem uh, we find in the, physiologic, in the physiological level of our body in case of uh, such a severe skin burn? It's not only the loss of um, shielding and protection from outer um, aggressive bacteria, virals, uh, viruses, and so on. Also, um, you find um, tremendous loss of water, which is um, evaporating from the body, and the destroyed cell fragments, they tend to um, block um, the kidneys. So, people with such a um, severe um, skin burn would die normally from inner intoxication. They develop an anuria, 
so they are unable to uh, give you to produce urine. Um, and all this happened in the case of Grace Sherlow. But after donating her for 20 minutes um, with scarlet on her kidneys, she was able to produce 240 milliliters of urine. Um, so this anuria, this inner intoxication, um, could be treated with um, a circulatory color with scarlet and the skin itself had been treated with violet, indigo and turquoise in the first phase and after a while the, you can see this uh, girl three months later she's still alive which even today is a medical uh, miracle. miracle. Normally it would not happen that way. Uh, but sh uh, they gave her up and so they say, said we, we bring her to uh, Kate Baldwin. She works with the uh, color treatment and we cannot help her at all. So let's give her a chance to um, survive under <laughs> the hands of, of Kate Baldwin and she did survive and even um, 18 months later you can see no strictures, no scars um, this girl um, has recovered more or less completely which is indeed even today a medical miracle and uh, these photographs show uh, again she recovered she is fully recovered. Here we have um, the case of Anna Schöner, a girl paralyzed from birth, unable to stand or to, stitch, uh, to sit uh, with unaided. So um, after several months of uh, tonation with spectrochrome, she was able to walk several steps without any help. So even neurological problems can be treated not only um, <coughs> disorders you find on the skin but also disorders in the metabolic system, in the nervous system. The colors reach each single space and place in our body um, by being conducted by blood or lymph liquid or um, direct contact with the radiation. And the near-infrared I was talking about um, earlier is able to penetrate quite deeply into the body. Um, I think some NASA studies say uh, at least 20 centimeters are possible with the um, specific um, near-infrared wavelength range. Here we have some photographs taken uh, 12 years ago, a patient of mine with a second to third degree skin burn uh, from boiling water. And just look at the date, it's the 11th of October 9, 1997 when it happened. And you can tell from these pictures I had to uh, um, remove the blisters. Blister, uh, the blister, um, the, the outer layer of the skin because the blister already had filled and was, was uh, prone to, to disrupt uh, in an uncontrolled, to burst in an uncontrolled way. So you have to remove it uh, in order to prevent um, further damage. Day three and four. And you can tell from this uh, area that it was second and third degree burn. You can also see the first two days there was a tonation um, made with indigo, only with indigo. The third day and fourth day indigo and turquoise. And these pictures look quite bad uh, through the projector. In reality, it was uh, much more impressing. But here, day five and six, um, treated with turquoise. On this picture, you can um, see that the burnt, uh, 
skin, the, the damaged cell layers in this area already had been repelled uh, from the body and you have um, new skin under this layer, you find new skin under it, day 7 and 8, day 11 and 12, day 15 and 17 and uh, if you disregard this little spot you could say uh, it's a integral it's a restitution ad integrum, so it's fully healed up after two weeks of treatment with color. Like we had no taping, no creams, no uh, nothing else, no chemicals, only treated with um, about two times uh, 20 for 20 minutes. Twice a day. Uh, directly after when when the skin burn uh, happens, you would normally treat with uh, the short wave with the ultra green colors violet or indigo, um, as long as you feel that something is going on in this area and you definitely feel it. I made this experience several times uh, when I had contact um, with my soldering iron. Um, or with an incandescent lamp, for example, which causes also skin burns when you have deep contact with it. And um, what I can tell from my personal experience that it starts tickling and it's not quite comfortable during the uh, tonation. But once you remove the color tonation unit, um, it immediately stops tickling. But when you retonate and it feels like being activated again, this is the sure the, the sign that you should continue with the tonation. And in certain disorders like we find it in, in these emergency cases of skin burn, it's clever to tonate as long as this tickling effect reoccurs after um, a break of tonating in order to prevent uh, the building up of blister and the filling uh, up of blisters because the skin is the best protection uh, layer and we want to keep it and this means if you prevent the skin from building up blisters you have to be careful with water for the next few days you should not sweat, you should avoid sweating in this area. Um, but if you made it for four or, th or five days mm, that way, then the problem really is solved. I'm treating the skin, yeah. Because through the eyes you cannot make sure that enough of the uh, photonic information gets there because you have completely changed uh, circulatory situations in, in this area and it's a classical case of tonating directly on the bare skin. You're using your light device about 10 centimeters away, is that when you tonate? It depends, the, there are different devices, you have flash, <coughs> uh, flashlight like devices um, and, pardon? What bulb are you using? Always incandescent light bulbs. And the filter? And the Roscoline filters uh, recommended by the Dinsha Health Society. So there is um, a s the, the um, attempt to standardize the colors nowadays because since I think 1940s um, it is prohibited for Dinsha Health Society, for Dinsha it was not allowed, he was not allowed to sell um, color filters or to sell his, his appliances. Um, these were FDA regulations um, so he could not um, sell the standardized filters and after his death the sons um, created the uh, or founded the Dinsha Health Society 
and they give recommendations which filters to use and these filters you can purchase from any uh, lighting store or you can order them at certain um, manufacturers but it's only the Rosco company producing um, polyethylene based filters uh, which give finally give the um, spectrochrome colors but um, you have to combine up to three of these uh, specific filters in order to get the correct uh, color U and saturation. Do you use diffusing filters? Pardon? Do you use a diffusing filter? Yes, I do, because if you want to treat large areas of, this, of the body, you have to diffuse uh, to widen up the, the angle and a diffusing filter should not change the color U and the spectral distribution but it widens up the tonation field so that you can comfortably tonate yourself from a distance of 50 centimeters up to one meter is enough to treat the whole body. It does not uh, disturb and it often uh, increases uh, or enhances um, the color effect if you also look into the color with your eyes but it always should be comfortable and um, sometimes especially when you're using bright colors like uh, yellow um, then it can be too much uh, looking into the light source. Um, in opposition to, to uh, syntonics, we need a little bit more um, intensity, light intensity. Mm, it's not only a psychological effect, uh, it has also to do with penetration of the color. Um, and if it's too bright, if it's uncomfortable, you easily can close your eyes. You may close your eyes, but you do not have to. Here, here you can see a comparative photo uh, set. This is mm, after six years, no scars, no strictures, um, no sign of uh, this mm, skin burn happened uh, six years before. And this is how a skin burn can also look like if it's not treated like that you can find infections it from my experience might take around six weeks uh, if you have no um, no severe infections until a skin burn like that is healed up normally so you can help your patients quite a lot um, when you think about the spectrochrome properties now we go into the system of spectrochrome colors. We have um, not only seven colors, like you would expect them from the rainbow spectrum of Newton. Can you tell me which are the ones uh, being added by Dinsha? Scarlet. <coughs> no, no, we are not talking about the, these three. We are so lemon and turquoise are the ones added by Dinsha because they are quite important. Um, when green is the middle, the central color and uh, the most important color, the the step from green to yellow would be too big, as well as the step from green to blue. So, in order to have the best um, options in terms of treating acute and chronic conditions we need lemon and we need turquoise and um, you can look at these um, arrows from coming from the center of this circle and the length of the arrow uh, explains to you the heating intensity or the cooling intensity Heating intensity, the maximum heating intensity is given by red. The maximum cooling intensity is given by violet. And so it's like having a kind of climate control. 
Um, so you can adjust the color to the specific condition you would like to treat. And um, green is the thermally neutral color and um, magenta we will talk about this specific color later. So when you have in acupuncture only a tonifying needle using um, one metal and you have the sedating needle using another metal, it's just two uh, uh, options and here you have eight or nine options when you are using red to the infra green colors are red to lemon and the ultra green colors violet to turquoise. Jan, you have a question. Yes, how can the, can the violet be so cool? It's <coughs> mixed of two parts of blue and one part red. Violet? Yes. No. 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 Violet is the end and this is, uh, thank you for that question. Um, because um, in printing and in uh, many, many brains, um, violet uh, is composed of um, blue and red. But violet is the end, the short wavelength end of the rainbow spectrum. It, it, it contains no red at all. These colors uh, blended from red and violet or red and blue, but this would not be exact. Red and violet, ends of the spectrum, and if you mix them together, you, the result will be extra spectral colors, colors you would never find in the rainbow. Extra spectral colors uh, are a specific color blend only made for us, for humans. We have only three color receptors, or nowadays we know we have another, but this is not for vision. We have three color receptors, and if we stimulate um, <coughs> the long wave color receptor, this is the result. If we stimulate the mid-range color receptor, this is the result. And the short wave color receptor, this is the result. Or it would be, this is not really violet, and here we have the problem that violet radiation from an LED is so aggressive to the eye, to the retinal structures, that I wouldn't dare to integrate it into a system like that. And if I want to have an idea of violet, then I have to help our eyes in order so, yeah. But this is not really violet. This would be purple. This would be a kind of magenta. And this would be a kind of scarlet. And these are the circulatory color colors, or in physics, in terms of physics, the extra spectral colors. Why do we need spectrochrome is uh, the question Dinsha raised and today we can answer it like that. The Goethe color system is only applicable to the eye with its specific anatomy and physiology. We already saw we have these three receptors in our retina and um, what we experience as color is physically only wavelength and um, our eye is unable to differentiate between a true yellow, which you would find here, and a yellow produced by red and green. Yeah? I'm not so, sure about that. Pardon? I'm not sure about that. Uh, this is the reason why I have an amber, a pure amber. The eye probably can, but only if you are skilled. Um, what, what is more important than uh, being able to differentiate it uh, with, with the eye or not? Because, for example, you can see it here. Uh, when you are watching the frame, then you can see, uh, especially wearing glasses, you have a kind of prismatic effect. Those who are wearing glasses can see at the frame, on one part of the frame, the red content, on the other part of the frame, 
right. the green content yeah. and in the middle it looks like yellow but when I use the amber then you would not have these uh, differences in the frame color can you could you see it those who are wearing glasses and those who did not who do not could you see a difference can you see can it. still see it Pardon? Uh huh. So you see a difference uh, between the color of the frame and the plate in the middle. Okay. <clears throat> so beside or outside the eye, there is no color. There is only wavelengths, and color perception results from cooperation of retina and brain. Electromagnetic waves show different primary effects on the cellular level compared to the colors we perceive with our eyes and color impression is a secondary effect. Spectrochrome not only acts via the eye but also on the cellular level and this is the reason why we needed the spectrochrome. We couldn't do everything with Newton because in the Newton system we do not have the circulatory colors purple, magenta and scarlet and we miss lemon and turquoise and these are physiologically important colors we had to add to the system and this is the blend or the mixture of Goethe and Newton more or less and Dinscher wanted to have a symmetrically balanced system and therefore he needed these 12 colors in total to get this specific color wheel spectrochrome color system. <coughs> Here um, the same as I told you before now uh, on a slide U saturation and physiological effect if you um, are um, adding white light to a dark deep red you are, thin, you, you are thinning, thinning the concentration and you are taking off the stimulating principle. So you, um, the result is if you take out the stimulation it will result in a sedation. And if you take out the sedation in, in the way of uh, adding white light you end up in a stimulating effect. And also the intensity is important. You cannot relax in a bright uh, blue even if it's a dark saturated blue because relaxation and darkness um, are in a way linked as well as uh, activation and brightness. And by the way, Finzen was working on this topic uh, also. He tried to find out the reactions of earthworms, for example, under red light and under blue light. And under natural situations, we have this link between um, blue <coughs> and brightness and red and darkness. The natural situation would be described here. The characteristics of physiological color effects, the infragreen colors are becoming stronger and stronger when we come from the green, from the center of um, the um, spectral colors. Lemon is the weakest stimulating or tonifying infragreen color and red the strongest. And in opposite, turquoise is the weakest and violet the strongest ultra green or sedating color. This only is true for saturated colors. The infra green colors are warm, anabolic, tonifying. We use them in chronic conditions. In detail we have the red, the orange, the yellow and it is too quick I know to write it down from these slides, but uh, one glance upon the uh, watch tells me that I have to hurry up to end 
my presentation on Dinsha. So we just flip through the slides. Uh, I want to stay on this slide a little bit longer because green and magenta are the axis of health. Green as the governing wave is the color of somatic balance and it creates a physical harmony. And magenta as the pure emotional wave mm, creates an emotional harmony and is the color of emotional balance. And especially when we start treating someone with chronic conditions, we use green and magenta for at least one week to bring back the ability of reacting to specific other colors to bring back this ability into the system. So axis of health, green and magenta. Here we have the magical color of green. This is the mm, center of our rainbow and this is the color which equilibrates the pituitary and the midbrain uh, area and therefore it harmonizes our system also on an endocrine level. The ultra green colors are cool, catabolic and sedative and we use them in acute conditions. So if some th something evolves which hadn't been there yesterday, we start with turquoise and if something you, if you want to treat something which you carry, which you carry with you since many weeks, for example, or even years, the infragreen colors would be the best choice. But we do not start with the strongest infragreen or ultragreen color. In acute conditions, we start with the turquoise, and in chronic conditions, we start tonating with the lemon. So again, we have to flip through these slides because it's too complicated uh, or it's too much information. You can get this information also from a poster I produced um, on the spectrochrome method. Probably I can show it uh, in the afternoon um, and I can share it also. Uh, the circulatory colors purple, magenta and scarlet are blends of red and violet. So purple consists of three uh, parts of violet and one part of red. And scarlet consists of three parts of red and one part of violet. And magenta is the balanced blend, 50% violet and 50% red. And we address the sympathetic nervous system with the red content of red. We address the parasympathetic nervous system with the violet and um, this is an antagonistic system and if we find out someone is under stress, someone has developed high blood pressure for example, it's not enough to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system because antagonistic systems are quite intelligent and they register if you are changing something in the ratio. So it's the better and more clever way to um, address the ratio to tell the system make the sympathetic nervous system as strong as the parasympathetic nervous system. In that case you have no counteraction in the intelligent regula regulatory system and therefore these circulatory colors are quite important and they are called pure emotion or emotional colors addressing our emotions. The heart rate and the blood pressure are deeply linked with our emotions and um, therefore we also can use these circulatory colors for treating mental, phys uh, physiological uh, or emotional disorders. Purple. Again, the magenta. You know this slide from several slides before. The axis of health. If you want, just want to balance the system, use one time a day the green and one time a day the magenta. And now we come 
to the tonation technique. In acute disorders, start with green and blue. If the time, if you do not have enough time, you can replace green and blue by turquoise. In chronic disorders, start with green and magenta. And after one week, continue with a specific tonation plan which addresses the particular problem which is left after this week, or the problems. Tonate directly onto bare skin, switch off all other light sources in order not to thin out the concentration, to, in order not to change the saturation, and keep the tonation room at a comfortable temperature level, about 25 degrees of Celsius. Mm, two times 30 to 60 minutes in 24 hours in case of severe disorder. Um, the, we could also understand uh, these tonation situations as uh, kind of re-establishing uh, rhythmicity or re-establishing a rhythm. If the rhythm gets lost, we are prone to develop diseases. So re-establishing chronobiological rhythms is something quite important. And we can do this by tonating one time mm, during the day and one tonation during the night time. And we should be aware that the infragreen colors are stimulating, though, so they fit best to daytime tonations, and the ultragreen colors are best for nighttime tonations, and also the circulatory colors are very good to use them during the evening or during the night. Oh, ready. Thank you very much.